In this video, I introduce and describe some essential details about the Edgeworth box. Now, an Edgeworth box depicts an economy between two consumers. I'm going to call these two consumers individual A and individual B. And the way we depict this is that we take individual A's axes, then we take individual B's axes. Now, you might ask yourself, how do you determine the length and the height of the box? That the length of the box is going to be the total endowment of good X. How much was individual A endowed with X? And how much was individual B endowed with X? Add those two up, and that's what you get is you get the length of the box. Uh, any, any way of dividing up the amount of X, that's not going to change, so we can just sort of set the length of the box as fixed. We can do the same thing for the um, total endowment of Y, and thinking about dividing up that total endowment in different ways. That's why we look at it in terms of a box. It just tells us uh, different ways to divide up the total endowment. So let's consider one particular point. We're going to label that E, and we're going to call this our endowment point. So it's the endowment of X for individual A. There's the endowment of Y for individual A. We can look at the axes for individual B, and we can get two other corresponding points. There's the endowment of Y for individual B. And there's the endowment of X for individual B. And so you can see how it gets divided up and how we can read off the corresponding quantities that each of the individuals hold. Any point in this box is going to be what's called an allocation, and it will tell us, just similarly to how this, uh, how this endowment point tells us, it will tell us how much of each good each individual has in that particular consumption bundle. And so we can talk about points here as what are called feasible allocations. They're allocations that we could actually implement given the resources in this economy that this economy was endowed with. Now the next point to make here is that we can look at individuals' indifference curves through various points here. Just thinking about individual A, we could look at his indifference curve through bundle E. We'll remember that what the indifference curves do is they tell us about three different sets that this consumer could be thinking about. Uh, they're the ones that the consumer prefers to eat, the ones that are the same, give the same utility as E, and there are the ones where the individual A actually prefers E to those bundles. Now we could consider a similar indifference curve, but for individual B. Now what we'll notice is that because individual B is looking at the plane this way, the convex to the origin is convex to his origin. So his indifference curves are going to have a shape that look uh, sort of opposite of what individual A's indifference curves look like. So again, we divided this into what's better, what's worse, and what is just the same, just along that indifference curve. And so that's what individual, that represents individual B's preference ranking uh, relative to bundle E. And so now what we can see what's going to end up happening here is that there is a, there's a whole set of outcomes or allocations here that both individuals prefer. Now because both individuals prefer those, if these two individuals were dropped into an economy together, they're going to want to trade to some bundle in that lies into there. Um, both of them will want to go to an allocation that's somewhere in this I-shaped region. And, and so that's going to be kind of the first observation of, of this endowment economy. Now the next observation relies on what we did in the last video, and that is if we have an endowment point, we can draw a budget line through that endowment point uh, for, uh, for some given prices. Now these prices tell us how the individuals can trade off um, uh, trade off the different bundles um, at the market rate. Um, this is going to be the slope, uh, the slope of this is going to be PX over PY, the negative of that. And uh, what we'll see is that both individuals will face this common budget constraint. So what, one thing that you'll see is that in this endowment economy, the way we think about how individuals interact in this endowment economy is that they take the prices as given and they maximize utility. So, for example, individual A might go to a point like A, and individual B might go to a point like B. But notice that we're going to run into a problem if this is actually the, 
the budget line defined by the market prices. If we look at how much of X is actually demanded, what we'll see is that there's this much X demanded by individual A, and there's this much X demanded by individual B. Now, this line segment and that line segment clearly don't add up to the total endowment of X, and so what's going to have to happen for equilibrium to occur in this market uh, is we're going to have to have demand, the amount that each individual demands in their optimal consumption bundle, equal the supply, which is the total endowment in this economy. And so demand is too little, so let's go ahead and decrease the price. Now I cleaned up a few of the indifference curves so that we can see what's going on. But remember from the last video that when you decrease the price, what happens is the line gets flatter. Um, if we decrease the price of X, the well, line is going to get flatter from the perspective of individual A. And it's still going to go through the old endowment point. So we get a new budget line, something like this green budget line here. And now what we'll see is that because it's flatter, uh, we might actually stand a chance of getting to a point where both individuals find it optimal. Now suppose that that's what happens here at point O. Individual A's indifference curve is tangent, and individual B's indifference curve is tangent. And so that's actually what's going to help us define what an equilibrium is in an endowment economy. Notice that as we started at this original budget line here, we were out of equilibrium. Supply didn't equal demand. What happened was uh, we had too little demand of X, and if we looked at Y, there'd be too much demanded of Y. And so what happens is, is the price adjusts, shifting the budget constraint, until what ends up happening is that we get a tangency at the same point on a common budget constraint. And so that's actually what occurs here on this green budget line. We get a, a tangency at point O uh, between the indifference curve of individual A and the indifference curve of indi individual B. And so point O, together with the price that gives us this budget line, define our equilibrium in this endowment economy. What you'll see is that if we sort of stripped away sort of all of the different budget constraints, this mutual tangency is actually going to be in that area, that I-shaped area that I described in, in, the, in, the previous, uh, in the previous part of this. And so we'll do some more analysis of what's going on in this, in this uh, Edgeworth box diagram, but it's useful to see what an equilibrium looks like.